Welcome! In this video we are going to be determining the first order correction to the energy levels in degenerate perturbation theory. Now, what that means is that we are now going to allow different states to have the same energy. And we will see how that affects our procedure because when we have degenerate uh, states we will see that if we apply a perturbation we will observe that some of those states, if not all, will separate into different observable states with different energies. And that is precisely the explanation for, for example, the Stark effect and the Zeeman effect, which we will look at more closely in later videos. All right, so let's just go straight into this. Now, the setup is going to be very, very similar to what we did in the case for non-degenerate perturbation theory, but a bit further down the road, we will make some changes. All right, so let's begin just as we did before. We want to solve the Schrodinger equation for some Hamiltonian, right? So basically this thing right here. And we are going to consider this Hamiltonian to be some unperturbed Hamiltonian H0 plus some perturbance H prime. Okay, and the wave functions and the energy we will expand as a power series just as we did before. So our Psi is going to be some Psi, N, well, maybe I should label them with an N. It's going to be Psi N zero, which is going to be the unperturbed wave function plus Lambda Psi N one, which is going to be the first order correction to the wave function. And previously we went to second order because we wanted to find the second order corrections. But for now, we will be limiting ourselves to the first order correction in perturbation theory. So there is really no point in expanding any further. And now let's do the same in the case of the energies. So the energy levels are going to be the unperturbed energy levels plus the first order correction. Okay, and just as we did before, we are going to plug this into the expression for the Schrodinger equation. And in fact, we will get <laughs> basically what we had before and there is going to be the point where we will apply some differences. Okay, so put everything in and we get H0 plus lambda H prime times Psi N0 plus lambda Psi N1. Remember to make sure to understand what each single one of these things mean. And then we have the unperturbed energy levels plus lambda times, oh, small mistake here, whoops, sorry. This is supposed to be EN1, I'm sorry about that, plus lambda times the first order correction to the energy levels, times the unperturbed wave function, times lambda first order correction to the wave function. All right, so now we just multiply through, same as before, and since we have done this before, I will do this a little bit quicker and only focus on the terms that will have a lambda to the first power because we want to find the first order correction we don't really care too much about the unperturbed state which is, which is the terms with lambda zero and we don't care about the ones of the second order correction which are going to be those with lambda squared so i'm just going to go straight ahead and find the terms of lambda to the first power which is going to be h zero times this part so h zero psi n one then we have this times this so h prime psi n zero and then on the other side we have e n zero psi n one and then we have this part so plus e n one psi n zero and this is precisely what we found in a previous video in the case for non-degenerate perturbation theory whoops i meant to do it here all right but now comes the difference, because now we are going to allow our states, psi and zero, this, the unperturbed state is now a degenerate state. Now, what does this mean? This means that we are going to have two, well, it could be more, but we will begin only with two, and then I will show how we can generalize it. We will have two states, for example, psi A and psi b and we will have a linear combination of them that will form our general state psi n0 and each one of these states will have the same energy so the Hamiltonian acting on them will give us the same energy 
All right, and similarly for the case of psi b. So both of them have the same energy, which is of course what it means to be degenerate in the case of quantum mechanics, okay? So both of them have the same energy. And we can also show that the linear combination also has the same energy. So we apply the Hamiltonian to this linear combination right here. We get the Hamiltonian times alpha psi a zero plus beta psi b zero. And we can now just multiply through. So we get alpha h zero psi a zero plus beta h zero psi b zero. And well, we know what each one of these things is. So this part right here is e n zero psi a zero. And this right here is e n zero psi b zero. So what we get is well, we, we can factor out the energies and that's going to give us the following expression. So just E n zero times alpha psi a zero plus beta psi b zero, which is precisely our general wave function. All right, so we now have seen that if we apply the Hamiltonian to any linear combination of these two states, we will see that that combination also has the same energy. Or right, just double checking that this is indeed a degenerate state. Okay, so now that we have discussed this, I'm just going to get rid of this since uh, maybe not that part. Maybe this. Um, now that we have discussed that, let us plug this expression in here. Okay, because maybe before we do that, let us remind ourselves of our objective here. We want to determine the first order correction to the energy levels, which is this EN1 right here. And there are a few unknown quantities, for example, this Psi N1, which we don't really know. And we, of course, have to impose the fact that we are dealing with the uh, degenerate states. Okay, so we will apply this condition. But before we do that, we will multiply through all this equation by similarly as to what we did in a previous case, by psi a zero, by the brow of psi a zero, which basically means we multiply by the conjugate of that wave function and integrate, so we get the inner product. And we're going to do the same for psi b zero. So we're going to have two equations. So let's do the case with the a first. So we get psi a zero, h zero, psi n one. And this is just as we did in the case of non-degenerate perturbation theory. This is just a trick to help us get rid of some of these unknown quantities. So that's the first term. Then we have psi a zero h prime psi n zero. And on the right hand side, we get psi a zero e n zero psi n one. And the final term is going to be psi a zero e n1 psi n0. All right, and now the first thing we can notice is that once again the Hamiltonian is Hermitian. So, whoops, my tablet lagged a little. So, since the Hamiltonian is Hermitian, we can let it act on psi a0, which we know right here is simply e n0. So, from this first term, just as we saw in the previous video, which is why I'm going a bit faster here. This is E n zero psi a zero psi n one, which is precisely what we have over here, because we can just take the E n zero out of this bracket. So this part will cancel out this right here. Okay, so we are left with this term right here and this term right there. And what we're going to do with this, maybe let's go step by step. So I'll just write them here, psi a zero h prime psi and zero. This has to be equal to E n one, which I pulled out of the bracket, psi a zero, psi n zero. And right now we are going to use the fact that these states are degenerate. So we are going to write this expression instead of psi n zero. Okay, so we're going to do that, but on the next page. Okay, 
So the left hand side will be psi a0 times the perturbation Hamiltonian times and now comes alpha psi a0 that does not really look like a psi I'm sorry psi a0 plus beta psi b0 and well that that's it and on the right hand side we have e n1 psi a0 alpha psi a0 plus beta psi b0 but first parentheses and then okay and now we can of course use the properties of the bracket formalism to separate each one of these into two different brackets so on the left hand side we get psi a0 h prime psi a0 and we can write the alpha in front and on the on this part right here we get beta psi a0 h prime psi b0 and on the right hand side what do we get we get e n1 and then we have psi a0 psi a0 and this alpha we can just write in front and I'm kind of running out of space but if we write it small we get beta e n1 psi a0 psi b0 okay so what is each one of these things well if these states are orthonormal then this part right here will be 1 and this right here will be 0 okay so what we are going to get is this okay so those parts just go away and this is an equation that we can work with why because this right here and this right here are known quantities the, it might look ugly but if you think about it this is just one of the states and so is psi b so for example if we think of some system that has degenerate states for example maybe like a three-dimensional uh, infinite square well which we will actually uh, see in a in a future video um, there we will have degenerate state so we know what they are it's quite simple to know the form so we know these psi a0 psi b0 and the perturbation is usually known as well so the only things that we don't know here are of course the energies and the alphas and betas okay so we are you know making some progress but this still looks pretty bad so let's now introduce a new notation so we are going to write w a b or maybe let's write it in general w i j this is going to be the matrix element psi i zero h prime psi j zero okay so this right here would then be psi a b and this right here oh sorry that, that's psi a a psi a b is the right one this is psi a a and this right here is psi a b okay it's just to simplify notation and now why is this a matrix element well we discussed it a little bit in the mathematical formalism but basically this is precisely the whenever we have something like this if you have worked maybe with tensors or something like that this tells us if we have many elements here right we have the ith row and the jth column this just tells us okay go to a particular row uh, a particular column and take out the value the value that is in there whoops i went back i didn't mean to do that um and we will actually see the matrix itself um, in a few minutes okay so if you're not quite clear yet, uh, don't worry, because we will see the actual matrix and hopefully it will be a bit clearer then. All right. So this is one equation. So let's just write it down in its final form. So the final form is going to be WAA plus beta WAB equal to alpha E N1. OK, but, you know, we have a slight problem here. We still have alphas and betas. So we have three unknowns and one equation so let us now try to build at least one more equation and to do that we will actually just go back to what we had before because right here when we had this equation 
we said, okay, let's multiply by Psi A0. And now we're going to multiply by Psi B0. Okay, so let's do precisely that. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this, which is where we worked with the Psi A0. And we're going to do literally the same thing, but with Psi B0. There's actually no difference from to what we're going to do here. So Psi B0 multiplying this beast right there. It's going to be H0, that, well, that doesn't look like a B, maybe let's fix it. B0, A0 Psi N1 plus, then we get, um, that's going to be Psi B0, H prime Psi N0. This is going to be equal to, let's just pull the energy term out right away because we already know that it's going to uh, be pulled out and Psi N1. And finally, I'm going to write it down here. The last term is going to be E N1 Psi B0 Psi N0. That's an N there. Okay, when I just try to make it look a bit better. N and N. Okay, now, just as we did before, we will let this Hamiltonian act on the state to give us E N zero, right? Re remembering these relations right there. So this first part will cancel out this one, right? Because we'll get E N zero times Psi B zero, Psi N one, which is exactly the same that is on the other side of the equation. So they just cancel out. And what we end up getting is this part right here psi b0 h prime psi n0 and this is equal to e n1 psi b0 psi n0 and from this point we can actually just go ahead and put in this relation right there okay so we are going to once again write this general psi n0 in, in terms of the degenerate states. Okay, so what would this be? This would be Psi B0 H prime and now instead of Psi N0 we write Alpha Psi A0 plus Beta Psi B0 and on the right hand side we get E N1 Psi B0 and then we have alpha psi a0 plus beta psi b0. Okay, and as I mentioned, this is literally the same that we did before. So let us now multiply through. So first part on the left, we get an alpha pulled outside, psi b0, h, well, that is not an h, h prime psi a0, and then we have plus beta psi b0 h prime psi b0 and on the right hand side I will just write it down here so it's a little bit less messy then we have e n1 with an alpha out here psi b0 and psi a0 and the second term is beta E N one Psi B zero Psi B zero. Okay, but here on the right hand side, exactly as before, we know that these two states are orthonormal, so this is just zero. And since they are normal, right? Psi B zero Psi B zero, this is one. So the right hand side will simply be this part right here vanishes, and this part is one. So it's simply beta. E N one. So maybe let's just move it up here. Okay, and we will introduce once again the same notation with the W's, right, with the matrix elements. So this equation we can now write in simple terms as alpha W B A plus beta W B B, and this is equal to beta E N one. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let, let me now take this and write it together with what we found before. And 
I think it should be about here. Yes, maybe let's just go to a new slide. So this was equation number two and equation number one was this right here. Whoops. All right, so these are the two equations that we found. Maybe let's just say equation number one and number two. So they are quite similar and we can see that there's a lot of alphas and a lot of betas that we don't really care about. They are just some parameters to indicate the linear combination of states. What we do care about are the energy levels. So we have to find some way to solve this equation and hopefully eliminate both alpha and beta. And in fact, there is a way to do it. Now, you could of course find other ways, but at least the one that I would suggest is that we take a look at some of the things we have. So we have beta WAB here and beta by itself down here. So, and, and take a look at this. This is the only part where there is no alpha in the first equation. And there's only one alpha here. You could of course do, do the same logic, but the other way around, but either way is fine. So if we were to plug this beta WAB onto the second equation, we would eliminate the betas and then we would have an equation with alpha, 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 alpha everywhere. And we could just eliminate alpha as well because alpha cannot be zero. Otherwise we would not have degenerate states and this whole approach would make no sense. Okay, so we will do exactly that. But the problem is that we only have beta here. We don't have beta WAB. Okay, so what we will do is we will multiply here by WAB. So equation number two will now be alpha WAB WBA plus beta WAB. We now have this term that we wanted, WBB, and this is equal to beta WAB, once again, the term that we are looking for, EN1. So now let us, from this first equation, from equation one, let us solve for beta WAB. It's simply going to be beta WAB is equal to alpha EN1 minus alpha WAA. So let's plug this in here. Um, wait, actually, no, that's, that's BA, not AB, that's my bad, sorry. So we're going to plug this in here and in here. Okay, let's do that. So the first term is going to remain the same. So WAB, WBA plus, and now we have WBB multiplied by alpha EN1 minus alpha AA. And on the right hand side, we have alpha EN1 minus alpha WAA times EN1. And Will you look at this? We now have an alpha here, 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 and here. Basically, every single term has an alpha as we had discussed before. So we can just divide by it because whatever number it is, it is not zero, right? Otherwise, this, this whole problem would make no sense because we said Psi N zero is a combination of alpha Psi A plus beta, uh, beta Psi B. So if either of alpha or beta would be zero, then this wouldn't really make any sense. It wouldn't be non-degenerate perturbation. It would be non-degenerate instead of degenerate. So alpha can't be zero if we are doing this at all. So we are not doing anything illegal here. No need to call the police. All right. And what do we want here? Now, remember, each one of these matrix elements is simply psi a zero or psi b zero and h prime. So they are all known quantities that we can easily calculate in a problem. So the only unknown here is EN1. So look at this, this is just a simple quadratic equation. Let's multiply through so that it is even clearer. So on the left hand side, well, we have WAB, WBA plus EN1 times WBB minus WAA WBB. And on the right hand side, we have E N one squared minus W A A E N one. So this is a quadratic equation, which is something that we have all solved quite a few times already. Um, I'm going to put it there. Okay. 
So let's just quickly solve it. I'm going to put everything on the right hand side and maybe just flip it because it looks better like that. So we're going to have e n1 squared minus the terms with e n1 because this part right here it's going to be w a a and then we have minus this part but the minus is already here so we get plus w b b and then we have one more term which is going to be um, this part which is positive w a a w b b minus w a b w b a okay and this is this is equal to zero and this is already in the form of a quadratic equation so we can just use our beloved quadratic formula and we will get e n1 is equal to and well what is the formula it's minus b what is b b is minus this part right here so minus b is simply going to be w a a plus w b b and then we get plus or minus the square root of b squared the minus sign will go away it's now positive and we get w a a plus w b b squared but let us expand this square so we get w a a squared plus two times w a a w b b plus w b b squared and then we get minus four times a which is one times c so we get minus four times this part right here so w a a w b b plus four times w a b w b a and all of this is divided by 2a but a is one so it's simply divided by two okay we can do a few simplifications here the first part remains the same w a a plus w b b and maybe let's write the one half in front okay and now we get plus or minus the square root and now notice that we have two w a a w a b here a b b sorry and we have minus four of them over there so if we add them together this part goes away and this turns into a minus so we get minus here and this means that now we have instead of w a a plus w b b squared this is now w a a minus w b b squared all right so we absorb this term to change the sign here and then we have plus four times w a b w b a but we can actually notice that since the form of these w's is some uh, psi so for example psi a b is psi a zero h prime psi uh, this is going to be b zero if we take the complex conjugate of this we are actually going to get psi b zero h prime psi a zero which is a w b a so we can see that w a b conjugate is simply w b a and of course the other way around as well so we can actually rewrite WBA as WAB complex conjugate. And why do we do that? Because then we get here WAB times WAB complex conjugate. And that is simply the modulus of WAB squared. So this is WAB modulus squared. Okay, so this is just so that we can get a few more simplifications. All right, and this is also a very important formula that it would be quite good if you can write it down. There are other ways to find these sort of uh, things, um, but this is the way if you have just uh, two states which are degenerate, you can find the first order correction with this formula right here. Now, the thing is that we will many times have higher order degeneracies, so we actually want to see what we can do there. And the way to go about it is to actually go back to our original formula this or actually these two equations right here and we're going to look at them now through a different perspective and we'll actually find uh, an approach that is it's uh, it's actually the same but hopefully this will be more clear when we look at it from a matrix perspective so let's write this equation as just a matrix equation 
So this would be W A A W A B W B A W B B this matrix multiplying alpha beta and this is the same as E N1 multiplying alpha beta. So these two equations are equivalent. If you are unsure then just multiply through and you will see that you will get these two equations back. It's very important that you understand how these two are connected. Okay, this is basically from a linear algebra course. And here we can see more clearly why we call these Wc matrix elements. Because we'll see that A and B are simply our indices and we have the AA, BB, and if it were bigger, CC, DD, and all of those are on the diagonals, and the AB, BA terms are going to be the off-diagonal terms. And what does this look like? Now, this looks like an eigenvalue problem, right? So, basically, the energies right here are the eigenvalues of this matrix. So what we can do if we have now higher order, so let's say we have not only two states, but maybe three, so when we make this matrix, what we would actually get would be something like WAA, WAB, WAC, and then we would have here WBA, WBB, WBC, and then WCA, W, then we have, um, this would be CB, and then WCC, right? And alpha, beta, and then maybe gamma, and E, N, 1, alpha, beta, gamma. So we have the same thing. So basically what we want to do is we want to find the eigenvalues or we want to diagonalize this matrix right here. And that is something that we know how to do. It might be a bit tedious, but it is a pretty straightforward pr procedure since we have done that many, many times before in hopefully uh, the other courses, maybe linear algebra or maybe the uh, courses in physics that led up to this. So this gives us now a procedure or a mechanism to find the first order correction for degenerate perturbation theory. And now it might look a bit abstract still, but uh, we will be uh, doing a few exercise problems in the next few videos and I hope that it will be much clearer then. So I will see you there. Thank you very much.